I don't know if you guys caught the interview with Keith Thurman, did with Brandon Schaub from Showtime Sports, whatever his little channel was, his podcast was called. But it it definitely um, solidified in my mind that Keith Thurman uh, strategically ducked Earl Spence in his welterweight division as well. We back at the Boston Clinic and more one time for the one time. And in this interview, you know, um, you know, Keith Thurman talked about his setbacks with his shoulder, then his hand, and, you know, basically already shit that we know, all right? But the one thing uh, that I really took away from the interview was his thoughts on Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence, all right? And one thing he said about, let's just start off with Earl Spence, we'll talk about Crawford a little bit later. One thing he said about Earl Spence is, you know, he's probably definitely the next best welterweight next to him, but he's number two. He ain't the truth till he beats Keith Thurman. All right. And, um, you know, and Keith Thurman knows this division was stagnated. And, um, you know, because he knew a lot of these guys wasn't going to fight each other. You know, a lot of guys was waiting for him to come back. And he probably figured when he dropped the belt, it would have some, a little bit of movement. And it did have some movement. You know, Danny and Sean finally fought. If that belt went online, Danny wasn't going to take that fight. We know that from last year when they uh, ordered a, a regular, they ordered an interim title fight. You know, but, you know, he was just saying, like, like, yeah, he can't be number one welterweight without me. His career can't progress without me because he ain't going to fight, you know, he ain't going to fight uh, Terrence Crawford, you know. He ain't going to fight this guy. You know, he might get the winner of Danny and Sean, but guess what? I'm still going to be looked at as the number one welterweight because I beat both of them, you know. And he just, you know, flaunting like the nigga can't do nothing without me. And that's how I took away from the interview. Like, without me, that nigga ain't going nowhere. He ain't moving nowhere. He gonna still be number two. He ain't gonna go fight Crawford. That's the only other guy that he can uh, uh, pass me by fighting his Crawford. And Crawford ain't crossing that street. And Earl ain't crossing that street. You know, until then, uh, I, I did what I did. I got married. I was boxing the streets of Nepal's. And ain't shit he can do about it. Without me, the nigga can't do nothing. And he technically right. He technically right. He put himself in a position to be successful. And even be stagnated and, and take a, and take time off and still be here, you know, and still be number one in the division, you know. And I think in the back of his mind, he know Earl gonna fuck him up. He knows he's on borrowed time, you know. He he, he did it on purpose, you know. One shit really really wrong with Keith Thurman like that. He could have been claimed back and fought, you know. He's he's on borrowed time. He knows he's trying to strain this shit out, get a few paydays, whatever it may be, all right. And. You know, it is what it is for Keith Thurman, man, you know. But, you know, what was so interesting, we talked about Terrence Crawford. He says that Crawford should have stopped Jeff Horn faster. And Earl kind of took up for Crawford. He said he just moved up, and he did what he had to do. He looked impressive, been beating and beating and beating Jeff Horn. You know, he said, would I would have stopped Jeff Horn faster? Yeah, that's what Earl saying. But Keith, uh, I don't know, maybe so. But Keith Thurman is saying he would have stopped Jeff Horn, but he didn't stop Leonard Bundini Bundu. I mean, nigga, you went the full distance with Bundu, Robert Guerrero, all them dudes you went the distance with, and you're going to talk about you would have stopped Jeff Horn, you know. And he going on here trying to critique Terrence Crawford, saying that he, he not a real welterweight, and he really ain't done shit, and he ain't on his radar, and stuff of that nature. At the end of the day, if you feel that way, you feel that Terrence Crawford in the real welterweight, well, go ahead and put your quarter in the game and play Pac-Man with, uh, with Terrence Crawford. Go over there and try to make a fight with Terrence Crawford. No... No fucking um, no fucking uh, tune ups. Go fight Crawford if he ain't the real world to wait. You know if he if he should have did more versus Jeff Horn and it was more to be desired by you. See, I hate somebody on the sideline that want to tear people up and, and or build people up or tear them down. All right, to Keith Thurman should be focusing on on Keith Thurman and getting the fight date back for real. And it sounds like Keith Thurman may be on that Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury undercard whenever that articulation be announced to the people. But he he shouldn't be going nowhere. You know, talking about no other fighters right now. When he when he's the most, he's one of the biggest pussies in boxing. The only thing that prevents him from being the biggest number one grade A pussy is Anthony Ash Juice Johnson over there in the UK. All right, without Anthony Joshua, Joshua, he'd be the biggest mark in the sport of boxing. He shouldn't be talking shit about nobody. You know, Crawford had an excellent win over Jeff Horn, and, and you was at home icing your hand and your shoulder. You know, eating a punani and getting whipped like a whipping boy. You know what I'm saying? He come over here talking shit and, and trying to be arrogant. And I'm the top guy. Arrow can't do this. And Terrence is this and that. And he ain't this. He ain't. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, all right, you know, you ain't fighting. 
you copped out, you jumped out of the division when water got hot. You got a little money in your pocket, you got a little buzz, and you seen Earl Spence coming. Every time you mention Earl Spence's name, you know, I want $10 million to fight Earl Spence. Or I want a Floyd shot if I got to fight Earl Spence. Or, or you know what, my belly ain't full and all that. Man, why are you trying to hear that, man? This dude's a, this dude has definitely changed, and his, his, his tone uh, his tone changed as soon as Earl Spence was 15 and 0. And, and now his tone is changing. And now there's Terrence Crawford in the division. And Crawford probably can give him some real work. And if Crawford that sorry, bro, I want you to tune up versus Crawford then. You know what I'm saying? Tune up versus Crawford. We don't want to hear about two or three tune ups. Because a tune up for Keith Thurman is, is a whole year. After he tune up, he done for the whole year. He he more liable to hurt his pinky toe or hurt, or hurt his pinky or, or something like that. You know? You know, so I ain't trying to hear that. You know, lucky if we let him get one tune up, you feel me? But we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Most blessings to all the brothers that's blessing me with your viewership and sisters as well. I definitely appreciate everybody that's sharing the videos, tweeting them out and everything else. We working hard, we grinding. Um, and uh, definitely uh, loving the LDBC support, loving the LDBC movement. Loving all the videos, all the brothers dropping, CB Sports CV, K Black in the building. I mean, Famous Athletics, AAA, uh, Ticket TV. Black Fight Fan, 7A Sport, Blood Boxing Return, Junior the Truth. I mean, this movement getting thick, man, and everybody is perfecting their craft. We're getting better and better, and we're moving as one, and that's what happens when you get brothers moving as one and putting all our skills together, and we building, 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 and we're going to build a strong foundation, and we're going to build a huge castle that ain't nobody going to stop, so we're going to be able to pass it down to the next generation, the next generation, the next generation, and that's what it's all about, brothers linking up. But I definitely appreciate all the sisters as well, too, for joining us and talking boxing. Shout out to the LDBC. One time for the one time we gone.